Hi, and welcome to video number 49. This video is on factorizing. Uh, the keyword that I've got for you is factorize. And when you factorize something, you are putting brackets into an expression. Uh, the first sentence that I've got written in the method section is factorizing is the exact opposite of expanding single brackets. Now, if you haven't watched expanding brackets video, please do so before you watch this one. It would be pretty useful uh, unless you know exactly what you're doing there. Um, and then the first step of the method that I've, I've written is to find the highest common factor of the numbers and or letters. That's what the first thing that you is that you need to do. Find the highest common factor. And again, if you don't know what the highest common factor is, please watch that video in the number section. Put whatever that is on the outside of a bracket. So whatever you find that to be that goes on the outside of a bracket and then put the terms inside the brackets. You have to figure out what they are that are needed so that you could multiply them out to make the original expression. All right, so it seems like quite a complicated thing to understand if you don't see it in action. So I will show you in the first question and you'll, you'll see actually it's a relatively simple thing to do for questions like this one, number one A. So we've got two X and plus 10. So we've got a two that can come out because two is the highest common factor of two and 10, okay? Um, two fits into two and two fits into 10 A is the biggest number that does so. You can't take anything else out because this this term's got an x in it and this hasn't, all right? So you open up your bracket and then you pop in an x, okay? Because 2 multiplies by x to make the 2x, and this is what I mean by this last sentence here. All right, then you're going to pop in a plus 5 because 2 multiplies by a plus 5 or positive 5 to make a positive 10, a plus 10, all right? And then we can show that this is an identity to this with this identity symbol. This is just another way of writing this. This is just another way of writing this. They are the same thing. Okay. So there is our fully factorized expression for A. Moving on to B, we can pop this symbol in there straight away. We've got 15Y minus 3. So what's the highest common factor of 3 and 15? Well, 3 fit, does fit into 15. And you're just going to pop the 3 on the outside there. Okay. Because 3 also fits into 3, obviously. Uh, nothing else can go outside, so you're going to open up your bracket. Now, this time, we're going to need to think about what multiplies to make 15y. Well, 3 is going to have to multiply by 5y's to make 15y's. So that's why we pop a 5y there. And then a minus. Well, what multiplies by 3 to make 3? 1 does, right? So it's a minus 1 that goes in the bracket. So it's a little bit more complicated because you've got the negative. You've got the 15y's here, right? It's slightly more confusing because you don't take out the... Uh, biggest number there and then yeah you know you see why it's a little bit more difficult right anyway that's the answer c slightly more complicated again all right just slightly identity symbol right think about the highest common factor of 4 and 24 well 4 is the biggest number that fits into both of those if you know your times tables you'll know that and that's a useful thing to know is your times tables um if you had a calculator, you could always check. You could always do 24 divided by 4 and see if that does fit in on the calculator. And it does. There you go. Right. Now we've got a Z squared here and a Z. So both terms have got at least one Z in them. Right. So we're going to take out a factor of Z as well. Z can come out on the outside and come out with the 4. Right. It's not so lonely, this number 4. Now we're going to open up the bracket and we're going to think about what makes 24 if we multiply it by 4. Right. And that would be 6. 6 multiplied by 4 to make 24. We've got to make a z squared though. Okay, and then we've only got a z there. So we're going to have to put a z next to that 6 as well. All right. Now, 24 is made by 4 times 6 and z squared is made by z times z. All right. Now you put your plus in and now you think about how you make a 4z. Well, 4z is already on the outside and just like the one above, it's just the number 1 that goes there. Okay, and that's our final answer. So we've got 4z and then 6z plus 1 in the brackets. All right, moving on to question number two. Slightly more complicated, obtuse, obscure um, examples, probably not really exam questions that you would get unless they're being particularly horrible, but uh, just showing you that there's some different types of ways, of, not different ways of doing things, but the same way still works uh, for different types of questions. So you've got 26ab plus 3b. Three is a number that does not go into 26 evenly. 26 does not divide by 3 uh, to give you a whole number. 
all right and the the only number that does fit into both those numbers is one and we don't write the number one in the world of algebra so we don't have to write the number one right the only thing that we can take out and put on the outside of our um, factorized expression is this letter b because there's a b in both those terms so we pop a b there we open it up all right and we pop in a 26a because if you do 26a and you multiply it by b you get a 26ab all right you put in the plus and the only thing that we're going to put in here in this bracket is a three all right at the end because a three multiplied by b makes the three b bit so it's exactly the same as before the identity symbol we can pop there all right and then we are just going to copy that over into the answer space now this is another really weird one right we've got x y z minus x squared y z right so identity symbol goes in you can see that you can take a factor of x and y and z out already because right there's at least one x and at least one y and at least one z in the expression in the two terms so you've got x y z all right open up your bracket what you're going to pop in there well if you multiply x y z by one you get x y z right you pop in the minus and the only thing that we're going to put in here is this x all right because we need to make an x squared okay the rest of it is multiplied by one and we don't need to write those ones okay we only write the one if it's not next to anything okay so we're going to close that bracket and that's our answer all right so again it's a pretty weird one probably not going to be an exam question for you but it works doesn't it now this one um i've got a little something that you can do before you factorize it you've got here notice you've got 14x squared and you've got seven x squared. So if you do 14 x squared minus seven x squared, you can change this question slightly. So you've got 28 x cubed plus, that's what that power of three is, cubed, plus 14 x squared take away seven x squared. If you know what I'm talking about here, collecting like terms, if you take 14 uh, and you take the seven away, you get seven x squared left. Okay, and now we can make an identity to that by thinking of the highest common factor, again, just the same way as before, highest common factor of seven and 28 or 28 and 7 which is 7 7 does fit into 28 four times um, and you can also take a factor of x squared out this time because that is the uh, there's at least an x squared in both of these terms so we've got an x squared that comes out and then we pop in the 4 I said you could multiply by 7 to make 28 and then we're going to put an x there because it's got to make the x cubed bit all right and that's what would happen there and then obviously we've got the 7x squared that we've already got on the outside so again all we need to do is put in a plus one and we close that bracket all right so there's our answer to that one so it's a little bit of more of a faff but it's noticing some things about the question that is pretty useful okay now the only thing that remains here in this video of factorizing and it does get more complicated than this i mean we can factorize other expressions as well but this is just uh ones with um ones for that were the exact opposite of multiplying out single brackets in question three, I've got Tammy, and Tammy is attempting to fully factorize the expression 34p minus 4p. Her answer below is, or her answer is below. This is her answer in this pink pen. Two, open bracket, 17p minus 2p, right? What has Tammy done wrong, right? You might notice straight away. You might notice straight away and you go, I got it, and I'm going to write down a sentence that says it. Or you could just do the question and figure out where she's gone wrong, all right? If you're confident in your ability to do these, you could do the question yourself. So the highest common factor, yeah, it is two, all right? You can take a factor of two out. Four doesn't fit into 34, but two does, all right? So she takes two out, okay? And then uh, what, what else can she take out? She can take out this factor of P. And you notice there that she didn't do that, okay? So already we've found the answer to the question, but let's just finish off uh, and just make sure there's nothing else that she's done wrong. So two P, and then uh, if we multiply by 17 P, so two lots of 17 is um, 34, that works. Okay, and then P times P makes the um, P squared bit, which uh, it isn't, is it? So we don't need a P there, all right? And then we've got, so we've got the P on the outside, that's good. And then we've got the minus, and then what do we need on the inside? Well, she got 2P, all right? Well, if we put 2P in, do we need 2P? 2P multiplied by 2P is 4P squared, and that's not right. We don't want that P in there. That will give us our 4P bit, so we're going to close our bracket. So that's what she did wrong. She didn't take out the factor of P. That was the only thing she did wrong. So she did not take out the factor 
of P or something similar to, the, similar to that effect would get you the marks on that question. All right. Now, I do appreciate that this is something that's going to take you a little bit of practice. All right. And I'll pop in some uh, questions into the description, link in the description, uh, and they'll be similar to these. I mean, these are more of the exam style questions that you'll get if they're being nice. So you could get something like this one in C. Uh, you probably you, you might get something that spot the mistake. Uh, but that's it. You know, that is the skill in a nutshell. Uh, please do practice. Um, like the videos if you like the videos. Uh, dislike the videos if you dislike the videos. Um, it doesn't bother me. Um, I'm making these videos whatever. So yeah, enjoy. Uh, keep watching and subscribe to the channel if you if you want some more videos and, and, and updates as to when they are coming through. Um, yeah, just be lovely. All right, have a nice evening.